uh, Ms. Veronica Mesa, Commercial Manager of Hispa Clouds, Irizal Bus, and Mr. Jan, our uh, Managing Director, Bus World Condition, and my friend, Mr. Fikri, our strategic partner of Bus World Southeast Asia. Uh, dear audiences, salam sejahtera dan selamat siang. Good afternoon and ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let's us praise the vision of the Almighty God for his blessing we can gather on this today. This uh, Bus World Southeast Asia will be now share season three. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor to welcome you in the Basso South Asia Women on Season 3 with a theme of adaptations in the buses and coaches to prevent spread of the viruses. COVID-19 pandemic has encouraged all buses players to do a lot of innovation in order to remain able to contribute optimally for their business. Starting from the social distancing bus with a fairly safe system arrangements, air conditioning system, UV LED and nano silver coating, which can remove the viruses attached to the entrial surfaces and many else innovation and technology that we can find in the, uh, or from the old bus players. Today's, today, Jam Indonesia and Bus World officially opened the Bus World Southeast Asia webinar series season three. Through this opportunity, we would like to inform you that Bus World Southeast Asia 2021 will be rescheduled again to the March 2022. With many considerations of the current COVID-19 situation around the world, therefore, Germany Indonesia and Bus of Punishments have decided to reschedule the Bus World Southeast Asia exhibition offline to 23rd until 25th. March 22, due to the health and safety concern related to the COVID pandemic now. Although the current, currently, the transmission of COVID-19 in Indonesia has decreased and mass vaccination are running smoothly. In addition, our government has allowed to host a threat so by implementing health protocol. However, we consider bus world to require the support a large scale international physical and exhibitor. This is the reason why we have to postpone to the next year, uh, March 2022. For next bus world Southeast Asia webinar, we'll focus on discussion about the bus electric, bus electrics innovation, infrastructure, and technology. We invite, again, international experts to participate in sharing their information and experiences. Indonesia is making big plans to develop electric vehicles, including electric bus. The need for electric buses for the BRP system is very large. For example, in Jakarta, PT Transportation Jakarta, or Trans Jakarta, is targeting 10,400 electric bus since operating in the capital city 2030. 2030. It's an initial step this deal. Trans Jakarta will operate about 100 units of electric bus, and 30 of which are scheduled to operate right now, uh, right on the Jakarta in June 2020. <laughs> Apart from Jakarta, L the electric bus will be implemented in the five cities, including Medan, Palembang, Solo, Surabaya, and Denpasar. The five regional will each be injecting a big fund from the government for buying electric buses. So our next uh, plan for the bus, uh, for the bus world will be, uh, will be focusing on the talking about electric buses. Furthermore, we'd like to send our deepest gratitude to the Askarindu, Indonesia Carousery Association, and IPOMI, Indonesia Bus Operator Association, who have been supporting us in the Bus World Southeast Asia exhibition and webinar. 
We also like to deliver our appreciation to all speakers, moderators, and all audiences who are present to be with us today to get a precious information from this webinar. Finally, we hope that all of you enjoy the bus war, Southeast Asia Women's Session, Serial Session 3, and get useful information from this program. I'm Bakili from Germanusia. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much for the welcome speech, Babaki. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start Buzzword Southeast Asia webinar session three, we like to inform you the theme of this webinar, that is adaptations in buses and coaches to prevent the spread of viruses. And for this session, Mr. Fikri from haltabus.com will guide us as the moderator. Today, we have four presenters with us. They are Mr. Jungwoo Park from Daimler Commercial Vehicles Indonesia, Mercedes-Benz. Mr. David Jetro Kusumo from PT Adiputro Wira Sejati. Ms. Veronica Mesa from his faculty. And Mr. Yan Deman from Basford Foundation. After all presentations, there will be question and answer session for 20 minutes. All right, let us welcome Mr. Fikri to lead the session. Fikri, silahkan. Oke, okay. uh, terima kasih Mbak Liun uh, atas kesempatannya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang uh, untuk para panelis dan uh, semua Uh, partisipan yang sudah hadir kami mengucapkan terima kasih atas kehadirannya, uh, kami juga mengucapkan selamat uh, menunaikan ibadah puasa karena ini kita ada di bulan puasa selamat uh, menunaikan ibadah puasa bagi yang menjalankannya uh, I will uh, please allow me uh, to deliver this uh, webinar in bahasa Indonesia in uh, English so uh, we can Uh, jadi kita bisa uh, menjelaskan juga kepada teman-teman uh, yang sudah hadir di sini yang uh, 90% kebetulan uh, dari Indonesia karena kebetulan juga uh, pembicaranya uh, mostly dari luar Indonesia. Nah, uh, kami uh, kita bertemu kembali ke dalam webinar uh, Buzzword Southeast Asia ketiga yang kali ini akan membahas uh, tema adaptasi dari sisi uh, bagaimana beradaptasi dari titik uh, sirkulasi udara di dalam bus. Ini menurut saya sangat uh, penting, uh, menurut kami juga di Buzzword South East Asia sangat penting, karena uh, bagaimana sirkulasi udara ini uh, perlu diperhatikan. We need to pay attention about the air circulation in the buses, Because uh, we uh, face uh, with uh, droplet uh, viruses, uh, and then uh, bagaimana uh, kita harus uh, mengantisipasi supaya tidak menyebar. Uh, Oke, okay. uh, supaya tidak uh, berpanjang waktu, uh, we uh, we invite uh, Mr. Jungwo Park. To deliver uh, his presentation, uh, Mr. Jung Wo Park is a president and director of Demer Commercial Vehicle. Uh, ini akan menyampaikan uh, tema safety first during the COVID pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, for the short term time, we invite Mr. Jung Wo Park to deliver his presentation. Please, Mr. Jung Wo. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fikri. Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to Boswell Southeast Asia webinar. And I'm very happy to share with you about Daimler Bus's product measure against COVID-19. 
Please allow me to have short introduction about Daimler Commercial Vehicles Indonesia. Daimler Commercial Vehicles Indonesia is a, is a subsidiary of Daimler Truck AG in Indonesia for Mercedes-Benz trucks and buses. We produce the main truck and bus models in Vanaherang in, in Indonesia. And with large facility in Chiputat, we do focus on training and good parts supply as they are very important factor for the customer's success which is our success eventually. Thanks to the trust from our customers in Indonesia, we could have more than 50 years of success in Indonesia. In fact, last year was 50 years anniversary, although we could not celebrate enough due to COVID-19. In terms of the bus model, we offer the buses from 10 ton segment all the way to 25 ton in Indonesia. And our three main volume models, 15 ton, 16 ton, and 18 ton buses are produced locally in Indonesia. So that was our short introduction of the company. Uh, let's really talk about the COVID-19 measures we had uh, from Daimler side. When COVID hit the market, Daimler had to come up with a way to improve the safety and comfort of the bus passengers. And today, I like to share the product measure that has been implemented in our bus models in Daimler. These risk reduction measures uh, were tested and also certified by the Institute in Germany. Before I introduce these product measures for Daimler buses, I like to point out that this is applied to the complete buses produced by Daimler. For example, in Indonesia, these measures are not applied as we sell bus chassis only and the bus bodies are produced by independent bodybuilders like Adiputro. I hope today's presentation may give good ideas to the bodybuilders in Indonesia and also all of you, you uh, participating in today's webinar in terms of passenger and driver protection from the COVID. To cope with this COVID-19 situation, we focus on four areas inside the bus for the protection from COVID. Number one, rapid air exchange. I mean, it is required to reduce the droplets and viral aerosols inside a bus. Number two, filters. Filters with antiviral properties, but without high pressure drop is required. Number three, we need to protect drivers too. And lastly, disinfectant dispenser without any contact is also provided inside a bus. First, about rapid air exchange. Our buses uh, with this measure is designed to have renewal of fresh air every two to four minutes, depending on the outside air temperature. The fresh air from outside roof will go through the air conditioning system, then air flows into the cabin from the top with less turbulence and it ventilates via footwear. Left air, uh, leftover air will go through the climate control system with filtration again. For example, outside temperature between eight and 26 degrees Celsius, the system uses 80% to 100% fresh air from outside. It means in average, the complete change of the air inside a bus is done in two minutes. In low or high temperature, the complete change of the air happens in 40 minutes. Current cabin filters can already remo remove particles from the air, but it is not enough to filter out the finest aerosols. That's why we introduced the new filter. This new filter works in two steps with three layers. First, it can physically capture droplets or aerosols. For example, the conventional filter we have used in the bus can capture around 80% of the 10 micrometer particles and only 15% if it gets smaller to 0.3 micrometer. However, this new filter can capture 99% of aerosol from 0.3 micrometer and above in a consistent manner without any high pressure drop. This is quite important because if we have very dense filter, for example, uh, uh, like existing HEPA filter designed for the office or lab, uh, it might uh, have 
high pressure drop, it means airflow speed will go down. So we have to be careful what kind of filter provides this filtration, but at the same time have fast airflow into the bus. Second is to inactivate the captured airborne microbial contaminants. As the air has to flow without inactivate them, they can go into the cabin again. And the material used for this uh, should not be harmful for human as well. The material for the surface coating on this new filter is the extract from the fruit and it is certified based on ISO standard. Based on the test, uh, by external test institute, the plaque forming units, we call it PFU uh, uh, to measure this, uh, the aerosols, the plaque forming units are reduced by more than 99%. Good thing about this filter is that you can just replace the existing filter uh, with this new one. So we also put active filter sticker on the entrance of the bus door so passengers can see and feel the safety inside the bus with this filter. We don't forget about the drivers. To protect the bus drivers, we install driver protection doors, which are in line with European homologation standard. As you can see in these photos, drivers are, are protected with the extra door, uh, which is a strong material or a strengthened glass so that uh, the, the droplet will not go into the driver from the passenger compartment so that he is uh, protected with the extra measure. Of course, actually inside the front filter, uh, the same filter that I explained is installed. So he also gets a fresh air and also a filtered air without any virus coming out. Last but not least, uh, con uh, the contactless disinfectant dispenser will help the passengers from any possible infection from the surface contacts in the bus. Um, I mean, we can have, of course, um, the disinfectant in the bus, but we believe the contactless one uh, will be better solution uh, for all the passengers' safety. These are four measures we implemented to our Daimler buses to protect bus passengers and drivers from COVID-19 or any similar events in the future. We, we never know now is COVID-19, but what's gonna come in the future. And I have prepared a short video clip for these measures that I explained so far. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope our example uh, is helpful for some of you in a way. Um, and let's hope that uh, this uh, COVID situation is over uh, as soon as possible so that bus industry can work normally uh, transporting all the people to their desired location. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh... Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jungo Park, uh, for your presentation. Uh, safety first during COVID-19 uh, pandemic is an uh, interesting uh, presentation. Safety and comfort is a highest uh, value for Denver, uh, I pointed. And rapid air change on board is a new edit in uh, Denver product. Uh, particle filters and also uh, you mentioned about uh, retrofit option of Mercedes-Benz bus. Uh, 
ini sangat menarik karena ini sudah ada perubahan juga dari uh, Daimler untuk uh, produk-produknya. Uh, untuk mempersingkat uh, waktu, mari kita uh, mendengarkan uh, please for the next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. David Jetro Kusumo from uh, Adi Putra Wira Sejati. Please, Mr. David. Thank you, Mr. Fikri. Good afternoon um, for all the speaker and attendees. And especially Mr. Jan and Ms. Mesa, good morning. And um, I will deliver this uh, presentation in Indonesian. As Mr. Fikri said, it's 90% of the attendees are Indonesian. But all the slides will be in English. So if there's, if there's any question, please let us know. We will pass the files if you need it. Okay, uh, we will start the uh, presentation. Before we start, uh, kita dimulai uh, usaha bisnis Adi Putra ini dimulai tahun 73. Jadi uh, kita sudah berkembang, kita mulai bekerja di industri bisnis ini tahun 90-an. Dan uh, setelah itu kita uh, berkembang terus dan pada titik sekarang ini adalah uh, titik yang berat buat kita semua, yaitu pandemi ini. Dan ini webinar yang cukup bagus di mana kita mencari solusi bersama-sama. Solusi ini pasti tetap uh, learning proses terus berkembang-berkembang. Dan ini beberapa uh, modifikasi, boleh dikatakan modifikasi atau uh, yang kita akan uh, pakai dalam kondisi pandemik ini. Dan kita, uh, next slide please. Next slide. Uh, se- kita juga harus mengingat dalam kondisi yang susah ini, betul kita harus uh, uh, memfokuskan untuk uh, proteksi khususnya dalam COVID-19 ini, dalam, yang memang penyebarannya cukup cepat dalam bentuk droplets dan airborne lah ini kita bisa katakan. Nah, cuma dalam keadaan yang susah ini kita juga akan uh, memberikan solusi yang juga tidak terlalu uh, membebankan bagi bus operator. Di satu sisi, kita juga tetap berusaha mengutamakan uh, safety dari penumpang dari uh, bis-bis yang produk, produk kami ini. Next slide. Jadi uh, ada dua di sini adalah safety dan uh, value as economy for the bus operator. Nah, modifikasi yang kita lakukan ini <coughs> ada dua. Sistem yang bisa kita katakan sederhana, dan satu yang mungkin sedikit lebih kompleks. Dan selain modifikasi ini, sebagai standar, semua, semua produk dari kami ini, kami sebagai standar, kami lengkapi dengan automatic hand sanitizer, dan posisi driver itu yang dilindungi oleh uh, partisi sesuai dengan tadi dalam presentasi uh, Mr. Jungo, juga UV lamp, UV light. Ini kita coba tawarkan menjadi standar. Ini sudah menjadi standar, uh, berusaha menjadi standar dalam bis-bis kita dengan modifikasi ataupun dengan tidak modifikasi yang akan kita paparkan. Next slide. Nah, ini adalah uh, yang saya bilang modifikasi secara sederhana, di mana kini sudah diaplikasikan ke beberapa bus dan sudah berjalan. Ini jadi lebih sederhana, ini AC uh, pada umumnya adalah di atas, rooftop, roof mounted AC. Dan di air inlet interior itu kita sematkan atau kita install uh, air purifier yang dilengkapi dengan HEPA filter dan UV light itu sendiri. Dan itu mungkin dilihat di pojok kiri itu ada seperti apa itu monitor modul untuk bisa mengidentifikasi partikel kotor ataupun udara bersihnya di situ. Berikutnya ini yang sederhana yang sudah berjalan dan beberapa bus sudah memakai ini. Nah inilah ini yang kita coba bawa ini dalam bentuk yang sedikit lebih kompleks di mana kita lihat itu. Uh, ada AC ini di, bukan di roof mounted tapi di rear mounted. Jadi AC ini ada posisi di belakang. 
Jadi posisi AC dari AC unit uh, menyemburkan udara keluar lewat uh, lubang-lubang AC dan menuju langsung AC-AC udara-udara ini langsung disedot disedot dari bagian bawah. Nah, dari bawah langsung akan ditarik lagi menuju ke uh, AC unit di mana juga disematkan tadi itu air filter HEPA, uh, ada air filter HEPA juga UV untuk dibersihkan yang kemudian akan disalurkan lagi ke lubang AC uh, dengan udara yang lebih bersih. Ini posisi air unit uh, AC unit yang rear mounted yang di belakang disertai HEPA filter posisi yang di belakang situ. Ini contoh bentuk uh, AC yang dimodifikasi. Ini mungkin uh, untuk alur-alur AC-nya ini mungkin kurang jelas yang ini akan menjadi nah itu. Jadi kalau yang hijau itu udara yang dikeluarkan bersih dari AC keluar ditarik ke bawah, ditarik ke bawah dan ditarik lagi ke belakang. Nah di situ akan dibersihkan uh, otomat uh, dan memang kita filternya masih pakai HEPA dan di situ ada UV juga untuk dibersihkan kemudian disalurkan kembali ke lubang AC yang itu akhirnya nanti keluar dari lover-lover AC. Nah ini contohnya dan ini untuk yang rear mounted kita ada dua sistem yang kita lihat sekarang ini adalah posisi uh, sorry uh, tadi kalau boleh saya tadi yang posisi yang sudah saya jelaskan itu adalah posisi dalam keadaan bis berjalan dengan penumpang di dalam sistem kerjanya seperti itu. Nah yang kita lihat sekarang uh, di diagram ini ini adalah posisi bis sedang berhenti. Jadi bis sudah dipakai sampai tujuan, driver keluar, passenger juga tidak ada. Nah dari itu istilahnya dari roof itu ada exhaust di atas yang kita lihat fresh air in itu, itu ada exhaust untuk mengambil udara dari luar yang bersih. Kita bersihkan udara yang tadi di dalam itu, istilahnya kita flush out dan kita tarik ke belakang, kita buang. Sembari kita pakai UV light untuk Uh, isanya membunuh kuman-kuman yang ada di uh, dalam bis selama selama dipakai. Nah ini alur-alurnya bisa kita lihat dari kita ngomong kita boleh bilang itu sunroof yang ada lubang lubang kuning di atas dia ngambil udara dari luar dibersihkan disedot ke belakang ke titik kuning dua yang di belakang itu untuk disedot uh, keluar untuk dibuang sembari kita juga memfla, uh, membunuh kuman-kuman dengan UV light. Nah, ini untuk berikutnya adalah varian-varian terbaru uh, uh, yang mengutamakan uh, physical distancing. Bisa kita bilang physical distancing yang kita baru-baru saja rilis ini. Kita namakan ini Dream Coach uh, atau kita mengambil konsep adalah kapsul, kapsul bus, kapsul hotel bus. Jadi masing-masing penumpang itu ada di dalam kapsul masing-masing individu seperti yang bisa kita lihat dan di dalamnya itu um, dilengkapi dengan uh, media entertainment dan masing-masing disematkan air purifier sendiri-sendiri dengan HEPA filter juga ada penutup uh, korden untuk masing-masing supaya lebih privacy dan lebih nyaman karena posisinya juga uh, nggak nggak rebahan ya itu ya cuman 45 derajat lah bisa istirahat dan ini juga kita salah satu terakhir kita ada permintaan untuk uh, mobil PCR unit uh, memang ini ada di dalam bentuk uh, sasis elf ya ini ya empat roda untuk menggapai daerah-daerah yang lebih pelosok mungkin tidak semua yang bisa digapai oleh bis jadi kita pakai mobil PCR ini untuk ke daerah pelosok-pelosok jadi ada pengambilan sam, uh, apa spesimen ada proses itu dan langsung terjadi di tempat hasilnya keluar di tempat lab ada labnya di dalam itu. Nah itu sementara uh, diskusi singkat dari saya. Kalau memang kurang jelas bisa nanti uh, file bisa kita bagikan. Thank you, Mr. Fikri. Oke, okay, uh, thank you for the presentation, Mr. David. Uh, 
Pak David tadi menyampaikan uh, soal safety modification. Uh, uh, Adi Putra edit HEPA filter, exchange air for inside and outside. Uh, saya catat ya. Kemudian ada mirip juga dengan presentasi dari Denver. Uh, Adi Putra edit installing automatic hand sanitizer dispenser. Uh, and then uh, UV light. And then uh, new airflow circulation ya Pak David ya tadi sudah yeah. dijelaskan. Uh, ini uh, cara yang uh, paling istilahnya paling simple lah. Value yeah. value for money gitu ya. Yeah. Uh, ada sorry kita juga perlu saya tekankan Mr. Fikri itu untuk karena kita juga mengingat dalam keadaan yang sulit ini PO kalau kita uh, dengan teknologi yang ada di luar yang terlalu membebankan juga. Saya ya. rasa kok kurang visible dalam keadaan sekarang hmm. di Indonesia. Oke, okay. uh, tadi ada disebutkan juga physical distancing with uh, single atau individual seat itu juga uh, bagian yang menarik. Uh, I think uh, step by step, uh, Adi Putro has a plan for next day to implement bus adaptation. Ya, Pak David ya. Mungkin uh, seiring dengan perkembangan yang lebih baik, mungkin uh, Adi Putro juga akan menambah. Uh, beberapa feature-feature yang terkait dengan uh, safety features ini ya Pak ya. Oke, okay. ya. uh, oke okay. kita akan ke panelis ketiga. We have uh, Miss Mesa, uh, Veronica Mesa from uh, Heavy S Heavy System of uh, Hispacol, uh, part of uh, Irizar Bus. Uh, so uh, Miss Mesa, you can start your presentation. By now. Okay. So, um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Veronica Mesa. Um, I am the commercial manager in Hispaco. Sorry, because uh, I can pass my slides. Uh, one second. Okay, now. Okay, so uh, Hispaco. Uh, It's a Spanish company that uh, designed and developed uh, HVAC uh, systems uh, for buses and railways for more than uh, 40 years. Today, uh, I would like to introduce uh, one of the products that the company developed uh, since uh, more than 10 years ago. So this product is called Echo3. Now you, it is look like this in the picture, okay? So the Echo3 is an air purifier uh, based on the uh, negative ions uh, generation, okay? So uh, why Hispaco decide to develop this uh, product 10 years ago before pandemic, okay? So in that moment, the key targets were, the first one, uh, try to uh, eliminate or reduce the bad odors that uh, um, Passengers could uh, find in a 24 hour uh, bus in which uh, um, bed drivers could be included. Uh, the second one was to uh, reduce or eliminate the bacteria more common uh, in the transport public. Okay. And the third one was uh, uh, to eliminate or reduce the virus that you could find inside a, a bus. So, Um, how this device uh, works or what this device needs to work. So you only need uh, a couple of things. The first one is a, a force airflow that can pass uh, from this, uh, through this device, okay? And the other one is an electrical supply uh, in DC current that could be at 24 voltage or 12 voltage. So the effectiveness of this product is uh, 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 validated uh, and is used for each um, 25 cubic meter of volume. It can say, uh, it can say, it, it, that, that means that if you have uh, a 12 or between 12 or 15 length of uh, meters bus, you should use two units of ECO3 to guarantee that you have a complete disinfection in the bus. 
if you are uh, thinking about a minibus, you only will need one Echo 3, okay? Other important thing to remark is that this device has been certified uh, with R10 in automotion. That means that it is validated to be to work correctly uh, uh, respecting the electromagnetic compatibility. Regarding maintenance and installation, it is something very easy to install, okay? Uh, we suggest to our customers that it could be located in the intake, uh, in the inlet of the turbines in the evaporator of the HVAC. Nevertheless, some customer has allocated this device, this product in the discharge. And we have demonstrated that the effectiveness of the ECO3 is exactly the same. So finally, you have to think that it is uh, the, the principle of operation is uh, the generation of negative ions. So you have a couple of uh, grills in the intake in the outlet of the device. So you have in a bath, you have a earth inside, the, a, a dirty air inside the device, okay? And when it goes through the Echo 3, it, it uh, gets clean, okay? So finally, it is a device, a product that is always in continuously operation in a bath and the air start getting and getting better until being completely disinfected in less than five minutes in a 12 meter long bus. To know that it is working, okay, you have a, a small LED in high in, in real light to check that all is okay. Regarding pressure or key data of this Echo 3, you have here the dimensions. You can check that is something uh, small, it's not a wave, it's not high wave. And the electrical consumption is uh, uh, no relevant, okay? The voltage that you can use, I, you have to remember that also you can use 12 voltage in DC current. The lifetime of this device that has been validated in the market because we are supplying Echo 3 uh, since 10 years ago, okay? So we can guarantee more than 20,000 hours of operation here also you can uh, check the ENC uh, certification R10 and also the amount of negative ions that each unit can produce. How it works? So as I mentioned before, this is a, a negative ions generation. So uh, the, uh, the negative uh, ions are produced, okay, for this device, these uh, negative avions are hydrocyl radicals, okay, and these we are immediately with the air that uh, uh, they find in the bath, and they get the disinfection of it, okay. So here you have a slide with some uh, principles that are collected in all the scientific articles in which you can check that uh, the, the generation of this kind of negative ions can guarantee you the disinfection. Anyway, uh, to, be, to have uh, any kind of simpler explanation. During the, uh, how, how it happens, how happens the disinfection, okay? So during the ionization, oxygen and water vapor are released into the air through the generation of a strong electric field that has inside the model. So the movement of the electrons creates an irreversible alteration in the macromolecules, okay? So the hydrocell radicals are unstable and to become stable, they take hydrogen from the, any particle existing in the air or in the surface also, neutralizing it and generating water vapor in the resultant chemical reaction which is released back into the air. So it's important to remark that uh, it was developed before the pandemic, 10 years ago. So at that moment, before to launch to the market, we certify this product with the worldwide uh, well-known laboratory SGEs, okay? So this laboratory certified that 
this device was uh, an effectiveness against the bacteria more common in the public transport. After the pandemic, our customers that were currently uh, using this, this uh, product, they asked it if it was effective against virus. So we could have theoretical uh, explanation, but we will need to uh, demonstrate it and certify this serious uh, topic, okay? So uh, at the end, uh, do you, within uh, 2020, 2020, okay, we uh, try, uh, we reached uh, the opportunity because it was very difficult to test the ECO3 against virus, okay? In that moment, the effectiveness that we can prove was 99.7%, and it was carried out in a National Institute of Aerospace Technology Laboratory that belonged to the Defense Ministry of the Government of Spain. Uh, the virus used in the test was the well-known virus MS2, that is a virus that needs 10 times more energy than rendered it to inactive than the energy needed to neutralize SARS-CoV-2. You can ask uh, Veronica why you use this virus and not SARS-CoV directly. And the answer is very easy. So we prefer to validate the product in the real conditions in a bus and not in a laboratory in a test chamber in, in, in which it was validated 10 years ago. So the issue is that the SARS-CoV has a classification that don't, doesn't allow you to test it uh, with human presence, okay? So we have a virus with a uh, scientific expert that have the same behavior, even very 10 times more energy power than the COVID, okay, with the idea to validate it in a bus in real condition. So trials carrying the biological defense area of the Defense Systems Department of the National Institute of Aerospace Technology was uh, carried out. Here you have some picture of the ECO-3 in the position, uh, as I mentioned before, in the in late uh, air intake um, in the turbines of the evaporator. So, Summarizing what advantage have DECO-3. DECO-3 is always in operation, okay? Always the air is cleaning. Even if you are in a transport public, you are open, opening doors, always the air is cleaning. And it will work when there are passengers on board the vehicle that, for example, is not compatible with uh, some other device that could generate ozone, for example. Uh, it has very key advantage in terms of installation. It's a couple of cables for the electrical supply and the location in the HVAC that you are inside the bus, okay? And maintenance free. It's very important because all the kind of filters that, that you could use to prevent or to uh, clean the air that always you have in an HVAC, not again uh, to, to prevent the, the, the virus, also to, to have a, a clean air, no? Uh, all of them has to be replaced frequently. So the cost in the lifetime of the product is very high. You, on, you uh, don't have only to consider the investment. So I think that this product is very cost effectiveness because it has a maintenance free. It was in a vehicle, not just those installed in the uh, back uh, uh, back program. It that means that we are a HVAC manufacturer, but it can use in any brand of HVAC, not only from his And uh, the lifetime, the lifetime has been demonstrated because it has been running in the market for more than 10 years. So we can guarantee more than 20,000 hours of life. It reduced the recent uh, infection, sickness among passengers, prevent motion sickness and feelings and nausea can be fitted in vehicles already in operation and add to reduce urban and surface particles. And for sure, eliminates chemical pollutant from the air. So the remark that is compatible with HVAC, all kind of HVAC brands, okay? 
and the very two important key advantages, very easy installation, maintenance free, okay? And finally, uh, the, you can know, you should know that the, this, the unit is supplied together with a sticker that the, the driver, can, uh, the bus can be, or the, the sticker can be allocated in the, in the bus to demonstrate to the people and to, to feel more comfortable that they are in a bus in which the air has been purified with a product that has been certified for two uh, prestigious uh, uh, organization worldwide uh, well known. So more than 10 years, more than 10,000 units in the world, working without uh, any kind of uh, incident or issue, okay? So it's a very robust not and reliability product with a very cost effectiveness um, a, a result. So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Miss Mesa. Uh, this is uh, interesting uh, presentation. Tadi yang saya catat bahwa uh, dari sistem yang dirilis oleh uh, Hispacol, mereka sudah di uh, apa namanya disertifikasi oleh INTA, Institute, uh, National Institute of Aerospace Technology in Spain. Uh, mereka me, apa namanya mengetes langsung virus di dalam bus dan kemudian di apa namanya di dites dengan sirkulasi udaranya dan efektivitasnya dilihat uh, dari uh, apa namanya uh, alat yang tadi ditampilkan oleh uh, Miss Veronica uh, ini sangat menarik uh, tadi dari Daimler dari pabrikan uh, bus kemudian dari uh, apa namanya dari uh, Adi Putro pembuat bus kemudian Miss Veronica uh, representing the air purifier uh, system uh, so, uh, in, in the next uh, presentation, we have uh, we can uh, we have uh, Yan Diman, managing director uh, Buzzword Foundation. Uh, Mr. Yan Diman ini akan menyampaikan uh, bagaimana air uh, ventilation uh, dan air system di air circulation system di dalam bus. Ini akan sangat menarik nanti. Uh, mungkin akan bisa uh, memancing. Uh, keingin tawan lebih jauh dari para uh, partisipan. So uh, for the certain, uh, please uh, Mr. Yandiman uh, for the presentation. Thank you so much, Mr. Fikri. Um, I will try to share my screen. So can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. Yen. Mr. Yen. Okay, so um, on behalf of Busworld and the Busworld Foundation, thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar, which is most interesting. I would like to inform you all about the air ventilation and purification program of the Busworld Foundation, which we do in collaboration with several partners in the sector uh, itself. You can see them here. Most of them are uh, bus manufacturers. We have uh, uh, VDL, we have Ashok Leyland, we have Yutong, uh, etc., and some HVAC suppliers like Sans Klima, Denso, uh, Flatner and some professional uh, federations of bus operators. They are joining in this uh, in this program, and I kindly invite you all. If you are interested, please just send us an email, um, and we can give you all the findings in this research project, which we do also in collaboration with two universities. So. COVID or other viruses um, are mostly. Uh, distributed on, on two ways. One way is airborne transmission, which means somebody is breathing out and somebody else is catching the aerosols uh, immediately in his, in his own body. The second way to get uh, contaminated is not airborne, bus, but is when an aerosol is being dropped down on a surface uh, in a bus, for example, and then other people touch this and, and touch their mouths, then it comes to uh, contamination uh, as well. Seems like in the contamination risk, 
70% of contaminations go immediately via airborne transmission, which means I breathe in aerosols that come from somebody else. Only 30% of the contamination is done via uh, deposited uh, aerosols. And this, of course, the 70% of airborne transmission of viruses can be restored or can be prevented by good uh, air conditioning systems. Uh, this is what we are investigating now. What are the optimal air conditioning uh, methods and purification methods that can be used in buses and, and coaches? So the research program goes in two chapters. One is the air ventilation, where we see how the air flows actually go, depending on the uh, supply vents and extraction vents placed in the vehicle. Uh, second chapter is the air purification systems. Um, that can be used in buses and coaches, as were shown already by Ms. Messa or by uh, Mr. Park or Mr. David. The main goal is to calculate the risk of contamination uh, for passengers in a bus. If we can show to the world that there is a very, very minimal risk of getting contaminated, which can even be lower than in individual cars or even be lower than in your living room at home, then we can really start to relaunch uh, our sector, which is absolutely necessary. So in this study, uh, we will use two ways to calculate this calculation risk. Uh, I will not go into details about this, but I tell you that these calculation methods are used all over the world in hospitals and they are globally accepted as be very accurate. The two methods, they almost in every case show exactly the same results or the same comparisons. The method of Lilyveld is a little, little more conservative, which means that we use this case and we always will approach the worst scenario, worst case scenario, I'm, I'm sorry, right? To model the airflows in a bus, we also use two methods without going into, into details, but we use one method for the larger particles and we use the drift flux uh, method for the smaller particles. That means that we definitely bring into image all the aerosols that are being spread out in a, in a bus. So in the airflow and the air ventilation system, we will divide coach and bus. Why? Because a coach normally is a closed area for, uh, for a longer period. A bus has door openings every, for example, 90 seconds. The door opens for 15 seconds, then close again, which has a huge impact or could have a huge impact on the airflows in a bus. What will we do in this uh, research or what are we doing in this research project? As you can see, we have here um, in green, the extraction vents in the ceiling of the bus in the front, excuse me, in the coach, we're talking about the coach here. The inlets are above the passengers and we will play with those modifications. So in a second, in an adapted layout, we will have the extraction vents here in uh, near the passenger's feet, as was also shown by uh, Mr. David from, uh, from Adiputru, which they apply. And we will see the difference in the contamination risk for, for the passengers. A third model that we will be using is a hybrid system, which means that the extraction vents in the ceiling are used as well as the ones in the floor. And in surplus to this, we will do the simulations with two or three different um, passenger seats which means that we will um, bring into mapping uh, the case where the passenger sitting at the end of the bus is contaminated. So what is the risk then for the other passengers? And we will do the same for somebody who is sitting in the middle of the bus and always coach in this case. In the bus case, we will, do, we will see four different uh, positions. So this is the simulations that we will be making. And these are the assumptions. Yeah? We will also play with the ventilation row. Will we blow in 900 cubic meters per hour or 1625 cubic meter per hour? Or in the hybrid case, we can go up to 3000 cubic meter per hour to recircle the air in, a, in the vehicle, which means that in between two and seven minutes, the complete air in the vehicle can be replaced, which means the amount of air. We will see in the simulations that not all air in a bus is being uh, recycled. And then we take what 
has been accepted generally and globally that there is 170 airborne droplets coming out of uh, of our mouths just by by speaking and we will do the the research for one micrometer uh, particles which is the size of a corona uh, virus but since corona always needs to be attached to another material to be spread out this is definitely uh, enough so let us have a look at, at the results. So first, the, the base case uh, layout where the passenger is sitting at the back. Um, we see here that the air flows, uh, first of all, they do not immediately go down because the air supply is into is coming from above the passenger, but is recircling. So that means that the aerosols coming out of a passenger's mouth, they do not go down. Instead, they actually go up. And we see that from the contaminated person, they immediately go to, to his neighbor. So the person sitting adjacent to, to the contaminated source is uh, has a, a bigger chance of being contaminated. In this case, as you see on the screen, uh, we see that only 8% of the particles actually reach the extraction vents. That means that over 90% of the aerosols are being deposited somewhere in the vehicle. If we compare this to uh, a situation where not 900, but where 1600, 25 cubic meters air is blown in. So that means that the volume of air blown into the system is, is more important. Then we even see that the amount of particles that reaches the extraction vents still drops down from 8% to 2.5%, 8 right? So we see uh, in the picture below here that the aerosols remain much more in the area of the contaminated source, which means that the particles are in a, in a kind of a loop, always staying at the same uh, place, not being torn to, to the extraction vents. And then if we compare the two situations, so we have a person, a contaminated source sitting at position 13B, which is at the back uh, of the bus. And in the first and the left uh, graphic, we see an air blow in of 900 cubic meters on the right, 1600 square meters. So we see per seat in, in the vehicle, what the cross infection risk actually is. And we see that with a air supply of 1625 cubic meters, that the risk is bigger in the area of the source, but is hardly non-existing in the rest of, of the vehicle. So there is quite an effect on what we see here. If we compare um, the positions, so we have a source at 16B, which is the yellow line. And we have a source at 6A sitting in the middle of a bus, always with the same air supply being brought in. We see that the risk for contamination is um, like something like 60% um, compared to one another. So this is the timeline, right? We are looking at uh, a four hour coach trip. We see if at one hour that the risk for contamination uh, for other passengers is less than 1% in both cases. But after one hour, the difference in position clearly is, uh, is shown. And for example, after three hours, 180 minutes, we see that the risk for contamination if a source is placed at 6A is 2.5% for the other passengers. It's only, uh, or it's less, it's 1.6, 1.7% for uh, the case where the source is sitting at 6A. So these are the uh, the findings we we have. Now looking uh, at the expected uh, cross infection uh, risk um, versus the the layout, uh, which means that where is the air supply being brought in? So. Um, the upper line here is the adapted air supply where the supply comes from the ceiling and the extraction vents are, are below, then we see that in this case, the uh, cross infection risk is reasonably higher than if we would have the same positions, air blow via the ceiling, extraction vents via the, the passenger's feet uh, or at this altitude. So we see that the risk here is, is, um, is much lower. And in, in the base case where the supply is over the head of the passengers, but the extraction vent is only in front of the bus. 
um, that here we see that the uh, at 1625 cubic meters per hour, that the risk for contamination is lower. So for each layout and for each bus geometry, uh, we can do this for, for every kind of coach, we can do this for every kind of, of, of bus, we can actually see how the air supply and extraction vents should be placed to reduce the risk for, for contamination. So we have some conclusions in, in the bus case and we take the position of the, um, of the source person at the back of the bus, which is the worst case scenario because the aerosols have to travel the farthest to get to the uh, extraction vents. We see that the adapted um, air supply or the adapted layout, which means supply in the ceiling and um, extraction uh, at the bottom of the bus with an airflow of 900 cubic uh, meters per hour is the minimal, uh, is the best position and reduces the risk for cross uh, contamination here, right? So we see that higher flow rates and stronger uh, recirculation zones, which means that the aerosols are trapped in a kind of loop. Yeah, they cause a larger deposition rate, which is normal. Huh? If an aerosol is caught in a loop and always makes the same circle somewhere uh, in the bus, it will be deposited uh, on a surface uh, on the bus itself. What is a, a, a very important finding that is that um, only a small fraction of the aerosols actually reach the extraction vents, which means that there is a link to the air purification systems. If we are looking at air purification systems that are applied in the tubes for recircling the, the air, they will be much less affected because only 10% of the aerosols actually will reach this purification system. And then the use of high quality masks is, is very important and decreases very significantly the, the cross infection risk. This is... Uh, the simulation that we made with for passengers wearing a mask in the uh, the base layout um, and with a volume of 1625 uh, cubic meters per hour if you're wearing a mask with a, an efficiency of of 90% you have hardly 0 0.1 uh, percent risk for for contamination so the use of masks is definitely very important but since we cannot ask our passengers forever in the future to be wearing masks. And since do we want to restore the trust of the passenger in our services, we have to reduce the risk within the cabin and within the passenger seat or the driver's seat for the, um, for the whole trip. So let's go from the coach to the bus case. You see that the bus geometry is very different in, um, in, a, in the bus case. And we also see that we are looking at a drive time of 90 seconds, door opening for 15 seconds, 90 seconds driving, which is a typical city, uh, city bus. We have not been simulating yet with different uh, positions of the extraction vents and the inlets. So the model we have here is a VDL uh, bus. It was also the case for, for a coach. It was a VDL coach. This is a VDL bus with the extraction vents uh, in the ceiling uh, of the bus. Uh, and with uh, extraction vents uh, at the altitude of the passengers near, near the windows uh, itself, right? Um, same for, for the, the driver, you can very well see here in the simulation, the, the air in below and the extraction uh, below. So this is the, the bus case that we will be looking at and we will be making simulations now with the positions of the, the contaminated sources, right? If a contaminated source is sitting here in front, position 1B, this is just below the extraction vents. We have a position just in front of the door of, of a bus. We have a position at the end of the bus, but facing forward, and a position at the end 7B, at the end at the rear of the bus, but facing uh, to the back uh, of the bus. These are the simulations that we have been making. And the first simulation is, is just a 90 second uh, period without door openings. And there uh, we see that the... Um, 
extraction is is higher than in a, a in a coach. Fourteen percent of the aerosols actually reach the extraction vents, but it's still quite low compared to the deposited aerosols in the vehicle itself. Over eighty percent of the aerosols actually will be deposited at the surface uh, on the bus, and we can see very well the airflow. So you see the contaminated person here sitting at position six A. The red line and the the red dots are the aerosols coming from this contaminated person after a 90 second uh, period. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Yes, uh, we have yes. uh, two minutes left. Okay, I will, I will come to conclusions. Um, so we see here the effect uh, of the door openings where we actually can see and, and, and show how the, the aerosols will move in the vehicle uh, itself. Um, what is important to know that if the door opens, the air coming into the bus is, is at the top of the door, the air going out um, is at the, at the bottom. Uh, so these airflows is something that we have to, to calculate as well. And in this slide, we, we make the comparison for, uh, for the source positions. And we can see that uh, with all the rest, same conditions after 300 seconds, which means three driving periods uh, of 90 uh, seconds and two stops with door openings of 15 seconds, we see that the risk for, for contamination uh, in the bus is much higher if the contaminated source is sitting at position 7D and is much lower for position 1B, which means that the position closest to the extraction vents is the, is the lowest risk. So this brings us to the conclusion that we will have to um, that we will have to look at positions uh, as close as possible with the extraction vents or bringing the extraction vents, if possible, always just in front of the, uh, of the passenger itself. We did uh, the same here for the, for the cross infection uh, risk. And here uh, we see that the standing position in front of the door causes the, the lowest uh, risk. And for each position, we can see what the risk is for all the other uh, seats here, right? After a 15 minute, uh, after a 15 minute journey. So we let's take the orange, which means that the contaminated source is as position 1B. You see that position 1B, there's no risk at all since this is the contaminated person. The highest risk is for the person sitting uh, next to uh, the contaminated source, but the further we go to the back of the bus, there's hardly any risk to get contaminated from this, uh, this person itself. And this we can do for, for every position. So if you have uh, your bus position or the geometry of your bus, we can actually calculate what is the best uh, airflows that have to be uh, created. For the air purification systems, we are evaluating these systems uh, on different uh, criteria, as you can see them here. And the technologies that we are evaluating are ionization, it's ozone-based techniques, it's UV light, it's photocatalysis, it's the use of hypochlorous uh, acid, and it's the use of HIPAA filters. So this is the research that we are being uh, executing right now. We hope to uh, finalize our study by the end of May. But meanwhile, if you want to participate in this group, uh, we have about 15 companies now uh, in this study group. If you want to participate in it, feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to share all the details with you. We are uh, together with you, part of the sector, and we want to improve the relaunch of our bus and coach operators as soon as possible. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yan. Uh, interesting uh, information for your, from your uh, presentation. Uh, Mr. Yan, uh, explain to us how to airflow spread in uh, buses and coaches. Basis itu yang dimaksudkan oleh Mr. Yan adalah uh, kota tadi uh, dengan karakter yang sering buka tutup sehingga uh, air, oh sorry, udara itu bisa keluar dan masuk dengan cepat. Kemudian yang kedua adalah coaches. Coaches itu adalah uh, bus jarak jauh mungkin kalau di Indonesia. Uh, ter, mungkin ada bus wisata, ada bus uh, reguler. Dan ini kita bisa lihat tadi aerosol untuk di bus kota itu uh, berkumpul di bagian belakang uh, 
uh, aerosol uh, concentration is in the back of the bus. Uh, sementara untuk yang di apa namanya uh, coaches itu berkumpul di bagian-bagian tertentu. Tadi dicatat oleh uh, yang saya catat adalah di bagian depan sebagian di uh, tengah ke belakang. Tadi malah disebut yang uh, paling aman adalah di nomor tujuh ya. Uh, in the middle of the uh, coach is a uh, safety year, yeah, Mr. Yan, uh, for, for the aerosol uh, uh, infectious. Well, well, it all depends on, on the uh, position of the air supply and the extraction yeah. vents. It depends yeah. on the source position. Um, so, so we can make every simulation that uh, that people might want. Yeah, uh, ini yang tadi disampaikan oleh Mr. Yan adalah uh, bagaimana jika uh, air circulationnya itu uh, artinya AC-nya ditempatkan di sebelah mana sehingga uh, impact-nya tadi yang sudah dijelaskan Mr. Yan bisa terlihat. Oke, okay, uh, kita masuk ke apa namanya uh, question and answer Q&A session. Uh, we have uh, mostly uh, questioning from the participant is from uh, for uh, Mr. David. <laughs> Mr. David, uh, you have a lot of uh, question from the floor. Uh, uh, for the first session, maybe I will uh, read the question for Mr. David. Uh, okay, let me let me read the question. Nah, ini ada dari Pak Sony. Uh, Pak Sony ini pelanggan rutin dua mingguan untuk bus uh, untuk Jakarta Jawa Tengah. Uh, pertanyaannya adalah soal air ventilation. Uh, mengapa tidak ditambah lubang udara di bagian apa? Oh sorry. Mengapa tidak ditambah lubang udara yang segar yang bisa masuk uh, first air uh, bagaimana bisa masuk ke dalam uh, kabin penumpang. Kemudian lubang udara buangnya untuk udara yang sudah ke tersirkulasi itu uh, bagaimana untuk yang uh, saat berjalan. Nah, ini yang pertama dari Pak Sony terus kemudian uh, sekalian aja supaya lebih mudah menjawabnya dari Ma Pak Muhammad Ardiansa dari komunitas pencinta Damri, apakah the air inlet yang dirancang oleh uh, Adi Putro ini sudah uh, sorry, sudah aduh uh, sebentar sebentar maaf maaf, maaf. Uh, sudah ada uh, percobaannya katanya uh, apakah sudah diuji coba karena mengingat uh, apa namanya di Indonesia ini uh, perilakunya misalnya kayak buang sampah terus kemudian ada kotoran di bawah ketika ter apa namanya tersirkulasi ini apakah tidak menambah uh, sirkulasi yang udara yang uh, tidak enak gitu ya terus kemudian dari Pak Radinal Mufti former Mercedes Benz After Sales and Technical Deputy Director Uh, uh, Mr. Radial Mufti as uh, how many buses already equipped by the system uh, from uh, Adi Putro and how about the result? Uh, and then the first fourth uh, question from Mr. Sadli, Sadli Amir. Uh, dengan adanya improve seperti ini, bagaimana kalau ada resistensi? Uh, maksudnya mungkin kalau kita sudah berubah, industri bus sudah berubah, bagaimana jika masih ada pertanyaan-pertanyaan terkait uh, safety, terkait uh, apa namanya uh, keamanan di perjalanan. Oke, okay, Pak David. Silahkan. Pak, di jawab. Baik, Pak Fikri. Coba saya jawab satu-satu. Yang pertama itu, kalau tidak salah tadi, pertanyaan uh, kenapa, apakah ada lubang tambahan untuk UPS yeah. Air ya? Ya. Jadi itu jawabannya ada dua faktor. Uh, di Indonesia ini suhu yang panas. Jadi kalau kita kasih lubang buangan fresh air itu otomatis uh, menghambat proses dinginnya dari AC itu sendiri. 
Yang kedua adalah polusi di Indonesia ini yang cukup tinggi. Jadi debu, mungkin bau-bau itu juga bisa masuk. Itu alasannya ke- kenapa uh, kita tidak menambahkan uh, dua fresh air itu. Tapi sekali lagi Pak Fikri dan mungkin tadi Pak 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 Ferry ya Pak Fikri. Pak, Pak Sony. Oh, Pak Sony, sorry. Jadi semua ini kita, saya rasa juga seperti yang disampaikan oleh Mr. Yan, semuanya ini kita adalah masih proses uh, belajar untuk apa yang baru. Uh, itu dari penyelidikan dari Mr. Yan kan ternyata uh, itu pun apa, banyak hal lah yang masih perlu di, dipelajari. Jadi yang tapi kalau untuk menjawab yang dua pertanyaan tadi karena dua faktor itu karena Indonesia udara yang cukup panas kalau kita kasih lubang itu otomatis AC-nya nggak kekejar lah kasarnya bahasa bahasa lapangnya tidak kekejar untuk dinginnya. Yang kedua adalah debu dan uh, debu dan uh, pol, bau lah eh, bau polusi itu mas, akan masuk semua itu meskipun kita kasih filter atau sarang atau apa itu akan sulit sangat sulit itu. Terus yang kedua tadi uh, tadi yang kedua pertanyaannya terkait uji apakah sudah ada uji untuk menghindari bau dari uh, apa namanya yang ditimbulkan misalnya dari oh yang dari kegiatan ya, sampah uh, apa sih ini pertanyaan yang <laughs> cukup sulit ya karena kalau ini juga memang kita juga gunanya ada webinar ini juga kita sebenarnya bukan hanya apa yang baru kita saja, tapi kita juga sama-sama bagaimana kita juga cara mengedukasi penumpang-penumpang kita, ya kan? Kalau istilahnya buang sampah itu pun sudah penyakit lama ya itu ya Pak Fikri ya. Jadi memang ya itu kita sulit untuk mengatasi itu karena di satu sisi kita harus mencari solusi yang efektif dan cost efisiensi. Nah, cuman pasti semua semua hal apa yang kita lakukan pasti ada plus minusnya. Kalau kita lihat dari tadi presentasi juga dari Mr. Yan Deman, uh, oh sorry dari Miss uh, Vanessa nggak salah tadi itu, itu pun juga AC Banyak. itu tetap harus ada dibersihkan di apa. Nah itu memang uh, satu, satu paket ya Pak ya harus 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 di maintain lah itu. Di, kita tidak bisa uh, menciptakan sesuatu yang oh ini sudah the best yang nggak mungkin ada perawatan apa itu masih sulit buat kita. Tapi kita berusaha terus lah dengan adanya ini webinar ini kita tambah ilmu pengetahuan terus. Itu yang kedua. Yang ketiga adalah how many bus already equipped? Ya, itu untuk yang mana ini uh, pertanyaannya Pak Fikri? Yang untuk yang, yang mod- air system ya? Mungkin ya, yang siang simple yang di roof mounted atau yang di rear mounted ini pertanyaannya? Yang, yang mana aja yang sudah? Ah, sudah kalau yang di roof sekali. mounted ini sudah ada beberapa unit ya, sudah keluar. Uh, saya tanya testimonial dari mereka, mereka cukup puas, ya cukup puas. Cuman memang semuanya ini belum ada uh, uji klinis yang ada suatu badan lah, mungkin misalnya dari Departemen Kesehatan atau dari MOT sendiri untuk okay. menguji klinis ini. Standarnya kayak gimana kita belum 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 ada sampai sekarang. Ini baru kiat-kiat kita untuk untuk dalam uh, mengatasi pandemi ini, Pak Fikri. Oke. Kalau yang rear mounted kita baru mencoba satu untuk otomatis untuk prototipe kita. Nah, ini jadi memang belum belum uh, ada yang uh, pakai ya di jalan ya. Mungkin ini menjawab pertanyaan Pak Sadli juga kayaknya ya uh, terkait resistensi terhadap upaya yang sudah dilakukan oleh uh, apa industri bus kali ya pada kita. Ya, ya. Memang kan sekarang belum juga belum ada istilahnya ada peraturan dari pemerintah yang harus mulai sekarang dirubah ya. Gitu. ya. Ya. Oke, ini ada pertanyaan berikutnya dari uh, Pak Mahendra Setiawan. Uh, ini ada apresiasi dulu nih Pak David dari Pak Mahendra. Oh, terima kasih Pak Mahendra. Ya. Nah, ini juga di, ditanyakan oleh Pak Mahendra ini, apakah sudah ada uji klinis sebelumnya terhadap nah. efektivitas HEPA filter, sinar UV, dan sebagainya? Terus yang kedua, maintenance uh, alat-alat tersebut bagaimana? Uh, mungkin nanti kita bisa tambahkan lagi, uh, uh, maybe uh, Mr. Yan or uh, Miss uh, Veronica Mesa can uh, help to answer how can uh, we 
uh, certified the uh, we can test the apa the air system for the effectiveness maybe uh, uh, Miss Mesa has already uh, certified uh, his faculty in uh, Spain maybe you can share how uh, it runs itu uh, uh, first maybe uh, Mr David can can answer uh, the yeah. question okay so uh, regarding the certification that the country has okay we have mentioned that we have two certification one uh, in which we can prove the effectiveness uh, of the a product against bacteria for the SGS laboratory. We can share with you the report, okay? Um, later, um, uh, we validated against virus, okay? Recent, more recently, uh, the last, uh, last year in 2020. And also we have a, a report in which we have a certification, uh, the, the, the key characteristic in which the um, test has been done and uh, the certification that is a worldwide validate. Okay, so finally, it's a, um, an official organization who signed the effectiveness that they have proven with the ECO3 in a, in a 50 meter bath. Okay, so both reports or certification are, uh, can be shared okay, with the customer. In fact, it always is included when we uh, send information of this device. I'm not sure if exactly you can access directly in the website, but if not, at the end of my presentation, that I suppose that later the, the, the moderator share with the attendants that can, can be interesting. Uh, I have my email and my phone, and you can write me, and I send you the both certification. Uh, also, the, the test can be done in uh, Spain, Germany, UK, or, or whatever. Okay, the certification has a worldwide validation. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Welcome. Ms. Mesa. And uh, how about Mr. Yan? If, uh, we, we, we don't have any uh, certification yet uh, for the air circulation system. Maybe you have, uh, you can share the uh, information in uh, Belgium or other countries. Um, yes, um, yes, we we can. Uh, actually, what we are doing uh, is via a simulation uh, model, which is much cheaper than if you actually have to go through laboratory uh, experiments. And these uh, simulation models are very uh, digital uh, and easy uh, feasible. So that gives a good idea. The effectiveness of the air purification system has to be done via uh, laboratory uh, experiments or real uh, experiments and, and measures. And there, since we are talking about restoring the trust of the passenger in public transport systems and in coach systems, it is important that we have this uh, information coming from what we call a third party. Huh? As Ms. Missa just uh, mentioned as well, they have a neutral body uh, proving the effectiveness of, of their system. And this is this is going to be really, really important. Yeah. But uh, as, as we in the study are showing, there should clearly be a relation between the air ventilation and the used air purification uh, system. That is, uh, that seems to be quite important. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Yan. And uh, ini kayaknya kita lanjut ke pertanyaan berikutnya, Pak David, uh, untuk yeah. Mr. Jung Wo Park. Uh, Mr. Jung, Jung Wo, uh, you have uh, already a bus builder advisory, right? Uh, you have a, a question from uh, the floor. Uh, how about your strategy to BRT system uh, for the adaptation? of uh, this uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, is there any uh, adaptation in a, a BRT system or uh, for the next uh, uh, project of uh, BRT of, uh, or for the next uh, uh, production of uh, uh, for uh, bodybuilder advisory for uh, body, bodybuilder in Indonesia? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, if I understood the question right, uh, the question was, is there anything that we are planning to do in yes. regards to BRT system for the future? 
Uh, I guess this is uh, regarding also COVID-19 measures. As um, Adiputro uh, introduced their measures well, I think Indonesian bodybuilders, including Adiputro and other bodybuilders are already uh, doing uh, this uh, protective measure for COVID-19. So in that regard, uh, I think uh, the next step that we will do is actually uh, this filter that we introduced already in Europe for the complete uh, built bus, completely built bus from Daimler. I want to introduce these filters uh, into uh, the Indonesian uh, buses uh, for the retrofit, if it's possible. So that will be our next step. This will not only affect the BRT buses, but uh, this will be uh, uh, available for the other uh, the intro, uh, intercity buses as well. Uh, so that will be our next step. Other than that, I mean, as I introduced um, for the existing units, you can see the bus uh, driver protection door is there. The dispenser is already there by the bodybuilders. I think uh, we are doing, uh, the bodybuilders are doing uh, what we can do at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for the answer, Mr. Jungo. Uh, this is the last question from Mr. Johan. On this occasion, uh, I may ask if there are passenger on the bus who have uh, who have been infected with COVID-19. Is there any possibility of contamination of other passengers on the bus using heavy AC or on the bus? Uh, Mr. Yan or Mr. Jungwo or, or uh, another speaker can can help us to answer. Well, from from my side, uh, the answer is yes. There have been contaminations on on buses and coaches, and that is exactly why all bus builders, or bus bodybuilders, and all operators are taking all the measures possible now to reduce this. And and we are doing it. And I'm very happy to see also that, for example, Daimler is also communicating with the passengers via a uh, a kind of a label uh, near the entrance of the bus just to ensure the people that the bus and the coach will be a safe uh, environment, right? But measures, measures need to be taken. And this is what exactly what we are doing now. Uh, how about Mr. David? Yeah. Uh, ini untuk pertanyaan yang mana nih Pak Fikri? Yang... yang terakhir tadi, yang dari Mr. Johan yang menanyakan uh, apakah akan bisa terkontaminasi nih kalau misalnya ada satu orang yang terkena uh, COVID. Wow, uh, <laughs> secara teori uh, sangat possible ya Pak Fikri ya kemungkinannya karena itu kan juga ruangan yang kompres air gitu ya di dalam itu. Uh, jadi tadi menanggapi juga Pak Fikri saya tambahkan untuk masalah uji yang tadi pertukaran udara yang kita lakukan kita sudah memakai software untuk CFDC simulation ini. Cuman ini sekali lagi Pak Fikri ini di sini bukan hanya kebetulan di sini saya yang mewakili dari salah satu bodybuilder Indonesia, tapi kita saya rasa semua pihak bodybuilder di Indonesia ini pasti kita juga sama-sama berjuang untuk berperan penting juga lah dalam dalam industri perbisan ini. Jadi kita mungkin belum ada standar satu yang oh siapa yang lebih bagus atau kalaupun ada yang berhasil menemukan suatu solusi, saya rasa dalam keadaan ini bukan untuk sekedar bisnis masing-masing individu, tapi kita seharusnya selayaknya kita untuk share supaya untuk membantu penyebaran COVID-19 ini diredam secepat mungkin. Kita harapkan sih pengennya segera kembali normal, Pak, Pak Fikri. Ya, Cuman okay. uh, ya itu, saya rasa ini bukan hanya Adi Putro atau beberapa bodybuilder, aja, tapi semua harus berperan penting. Jadi okay. siapa yang sudah menemukan solusi yang terbaik, selainnya kita harus uh, share untuk kepentingan bersama. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih nih, Mr. David. Oke, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, participant and uh, panelists. Uh, this is a interesting webinar. Uh, terima kasih atas partisipasi dari peserta dan seluruh panelis. Uh, kami berterima kasih uh, sudah uh, pada terutama pada para peserta yang sudah uh, 
meluangkan waktu untuk bisa uh, ikut dalam webinar ini. Semoga webinar ini bisa menjadi satu masukan dan rumusan. Kami tidak akan menarik kesimpulan apapun dari webinar karena uh, saya yakin uh, teman-teman peserta ini juga sudah mem- mendapat gambaran uh, yang gamblang dari uh, para panelis. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for uh, attending uh, so we can uh, end the uh, session, uh, webinar uh, discussion session. So, I have to deliver this uh, webinar to Miss uh, Bun Liyun. All right. Thank you for leading the session, Pak Fikri. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We would welcome Mr. Yang Deman from Basur Foundation to deliver a closing remark of today's webinar. Yan, would you please take the stage? Yes, thank you so much, uh, Bun Liun. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you very much to, to the speakers. We consider you all as friends of, uh, of Busworld, and it's very good to be able to, let's say, collaborate closely together in handling the challenges that have been put to us to external circumstances like, uh, like COVID, right? So we are happy to unite the, the industry to, as I say, uh, find solutions to the adaptions that need to be made. The main goal, as I said, is to restore the passengers' trust in public transport. Uh, this is absolutely necessary for uh, our entire uh, industry. And this is exactly what we are doing. We will not just be communicating how good we are, we will ask and convince third parties research institutions to convince the passenger that the measures that we have taken are good and we will actually execute those those measures. We will not only communicate, but we will also make sure that the bus and the coach is a safe environment for everybody, driver and passengers uh, included. So thanks again for all for uh, attending. Thank you, uh, Mr. Park, uh, Mr. David, and Ms. Mesa for your inputs. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bakili and your team for the excellent organization of this Bus World webinar. I look forward, ladies and gentlemen, to see you all again on July the 7th for the next webinar, which will focus on charging infrastructure on the way to low and zero emission bus and coach transport in Indonesia. And we will compare the costs and the operations uh, with the situation we know today with diesel buses. So thank you, and I look forward to see you all again on July the 7th. Ms. Bunli, Yun, up to you again. All right. Thank you for the closing remark, Yan. Now to all speakers and moderator, we will take a virtual photo session right now. I will count to three for the photo capture. All set. One, two, three, hold the pose. All right, thank you everyone. As our token of appreciation, now we like to show all virtual certificates presented to all speakers and moderator of Buzzword Southeast Asia webinar series, session three. The certificates will be sent directly to each speaker's and moderator's email. First certificate goes to Mr. Jungwoo Park. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Park. Second goes to Pak David Jetro Kusumo. Terima kasih atas presentasinya yang menarik, Pak David. Then to Miss Veronica Mesa. Thank you for your presentation, Miss Veronica. And last certificate goes to our moderator, Mr. Fikri. Terima kasih banyak telah bersedia menjadi moderator pada hari ini, Mas Fikri. To all attendees who like to have presentation materials, please visit our website at www.buzzwordsaudisasia.org which is shown on your screen. And through this opportunity, we would like to send our gratitude to Askarindo and Ipomi for the support on this event. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some information we like to share with you all. First of all, Buzzword Southeast Asia exhibition 
which was planned to be held this year, is rescheduled to 23rd until 25th of March <clears throat> 2022. The venue will still be the same at Jakarta International Expo Kemayoran. We wish to see you there in person. Second, we will hold Buzzword Southeast Asia webinar session four in July 7, 2021. The discussion theme will be the future of Indonesia's bus and coach, charging infrastructure for electric buses. Don't miss the chance to witness our distinguished speakers of Buzzword webinar session four. Stay tuned in our website, www.buzzwordsoutheastasia.org to keep updated. And lastly, we have a questionnaire for you and we will send it to your email. Would you please fill in the form and send it back to us? We would really appreciate your response. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our webinar has ended. We thank you all for the support you have been giving us for this event. I'm Boon Liun from Game Indonesia. Wish you to take care and stay healthy and see you at the next Buzzword Southeast Asia webinar. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. This is Jakarta, Indonesia, one of the world's biggest megacities in an urban cluster of 30 million inhabitants. In the bouncing heart of Southeast Asia, Buzzworld landed for a tremendous first time international mobility bus and coach exhibition. I have a very good feeling. Buzzworld being right on time in an extremely challenging era for a country of 260 million inhabitants. It became the key factor for a smash hit in the core of the collective transport and bus and coach market. The first edition welcomed the biggest and most popular bus and coach manufacturers and bodybuilders of Indonesia. Mercedes-Benz, Volvo Buses, New Armada and Luxana. All of the key brands were here and 7,000 unique visitors came to the venue together with the international professional press. Once again, we round of applause for this great opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Volvo B11R and Volvo. Launching new products like the Volvo B11R or the Mercedes-Benz OF917. Updating the audience and the press, open air ceremonies for new buses and presenting companies with accessories and components. It all took part in the JI Expo on Bus Road Indonesia 2019. The market for buses and coaches in Indonesia was clearly waiting for an exhibition like this. The two core organizing partners of Buzzworld International, the Federation of Young Bus and Coach Operators, IPOMI, and the Federation of Bus Bodybuilders in Indonesia, Askarindo, did a great job in bringing together the operators, the decision makers, and all lovers of buses and coaches in the country. Checking out the latest designs of buses and coaches, components and spare parts on Buzzworld is easily combined with attending presentations, seminars and expert classes at a conference organized by Buzzworld Academy. 350 people from 30 countries came to listen to speakers and international mobility specialists from more than 15 countries. Buzzworld Southeast Asia 2019 exceeded all expectations and was a real bullseye for the bus and coach community.